There's been an arrest following last Sunday's massacre of nine in Dayton, Ohio. A friend of the deceased gunman was taken into custody on federal weapons charges. The 24-year-old allegedly bought the body armor and the 100-round double drum magazine used in the attack. Investigators say he stored them in his residence to help hide them from the shooter's parents. Over the weekend, a slew of Democratic presidential candidates addressed the gun violence uh, epidemic at a forum in Iowa. One of them, Andrew Yang, was brought to tears by what he heard from a mom in the crowd. My beautiful four-year-old daughter, Dela, was struck by a stray bullet March 2011. My son, my daughter's twin brother, witnessed what happened that day. I have a six and three-year-old boy, I'm imagining. I was imagining it was one of them. I got shot, and the other saw it. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I spoke to Andrew Yang just before air. Would you play that emotional moment uh, from this weekend in, in Iowa? Are you surprised, given all, all the attention right now on the issue of background checks and, and guns, that Mitch McConnell is not... I mean, I'm willing to, to, bring, uh, to bring folks back to actually address this or even clear on what moves he would support, if any? I mean, at this point, the will of the American people is very clear, and hopefully he'll see reason and reconvene uh, the Senate so we can get this legislation passed. When you say, am I surprised, unfortunately, it's not as surprising as, as I wish it were. It seems like he's, I mean, you can make the argument he's trying to slow walk this and basically hope that attention dies down on it and passions die down on it. Yeah, that's been the playbook, certainly. They hope that the country turns its attention to something else, but I have a feeling that the country is not going to let this one go until we get some laws uh, across the finish line. The, the president talks about wanting meaningful background checks. In the past, after Parkland, he, talks about, he talked about you know raising the age for buying a, a long rifle. He talked about background checks as well, and then nothing happens, and he seems to kind of walk away from it as soon as people who support, you know, support those ideas leave the room and the NRA or somebody else comes in and has a different opinion. Yeah, we're, we're kind of accustomed to an erratic level of commitment and decision making out of the White House, unfortunately. I think we have an historic opportunity right now, not only because the American people are so outraged and eager for real action, but also the NRA is kind of a mess right now. The NRA is in, in disarray. Mm. And I think that uh, their ability to counter the will of the American people is somewhat diminished right now. So we have to take care of this, take advantage of this opportunity. There's still, I mean, it's easy to overstate the the problems within the NRA, and they still have a lot of money. They're still very powerful. Yeah, of course. Uh, but do you worry know. about about that uh, about their influence in politics? I mean, do you think they still they still carry tremendous weight? Well, the times are changing, but the stranglehold the NRA has had on gun legislation is a sign of a larger problem, which is that our politics have been overrun by lobbyists, been overrun by corporate money and, and other funders. So one of my flagship proposals is to give every American $100 every year that we can only give to candidates and campaigns, hmm. which would wash out lobbyist cash by a factor of eight to one. So, uh, so that would be they could uh, you would give every American hundred dollars every year to donate to a campaign. Just democracy dollars. You use it or lose it. You can only use these dollars to contribute to a candidate or campaign. And if you don't use them, they disappear and you get. So would there still be lobbyist money allowed? I mean, you can't stop that, can? You? So that's the the trick here, Anderson, is that the NRA has their tens of millions of dollars. They have legislators locked up. And so the legislators feel like it's in their self-preservation to listen to the NRA and not the will of the American people. Money talks in this country, and it's very hard to push lobbyist money out of politics entirely. So what we do is we wash it out with a flood of people-powered money, where if you're a legislator and the NRA says, hey, I've got $500,000 for you to run against you, and then your people say, look, who cares about their 500,000? I've got $5 million because there are 50,000 of us giving you $100 each. Mm -hmm. Then we can actually turn and align the legislators' self-interest with the will of the people. What do you support in terms of change on laws re regarding firearms? Uh, I'm aligned with most all of the other Democratic candidates where we need universal background checks, we need red flag laws, we need to ban military-style assault weapons. Uh, now, the question is, why are we not getting this done? 
And then the answer is the NRA and lobbyist cash and the fact that the, the legislative process is now disconnected with the will of the people. So we have to address that. Then we have to try and get the gun manufacturer's interest aligned also with the American people. We need to have a perpetual buyback of guns in this country because there are over 300 million firearms out there right. in right. private hands. E even if there's an assault weapons ban, I mean, that's one of the the conclusions that they reached uh, in 2004, I think the final report on the assault weapons ban was uh, it wasn't long enough to actually uh, have a demonstrable effect on on gun deaths uh, because there are so many, so many out there. weapons still out there. Yeah, no matter what laws we have in the books, it doesn't diminish the supply that's out there because it's not like these guns disappear. I mean, a lot of them are in private homes. So a perpetual buyback where any gun owner could trade in their gun, even if it's beat up or crummy. I mean, you can imagine some of them being like, oh, this is not the gun. This is not my favorite gun. <laughs> I'll trade this one in and we can start to decrease the supply over time. We can also try and make the guns safer by having them uh, be personalized to a particular owner's handprint. So it's not fingerprint. It doesn't need to actually read your fingers, but it can actually be personalized based upon your grip, the dimensions of your fingers, like where the weight's coming from. And so then if that gun gets into a child's hands or someone else's hands, then it's useless. And many gun owners are parents and would be very excited about personalizing their weapon, mm -hmm. particularly if the government were to subsidize that or even pay for it. Uh, Elon Musk tweeted out support for you. Yes, Elon is part of the Yang Yang. <laughs> we're so excited about it. What uh, was it? It was the three-word tweet? It was, I support Yang, which says it all. <laughs> um, but, but, That's but, all you need to say? But now Elon's team is in touch with my team, and uh, we're going to, to put our heads together. Elon's uh, ahead of the curve, obviously, in terms of seeing the future everything. and seeing what's coming. <laughs> yes. And so, I mean, brilliant, clearly. Yeah, so we couldn't be more thrilled uh, with his endorsement. Mm. Vice presidential candidate, perhaps? I don't think he wants that job, <laughs> Anderson. I think he'll be like, huh, oh, SpaceX, Tesla, VP. Uh, uh, I have yeah, a feeling a yeah. VP might lose in, in that horse race. Uh, Andrew Yang, it's good to talk to you. Thank you. It's great seeing you. Thank you, Anderson. Appreciate it.